septoria spores are carried in the atmosphere by the wind, moving from one plant to another, from one crop to the next. On autumn sown wheat, evidence of infection can be seen at an early stage. Damp, moist, temperate conditions, typical for the UK, provide ideal conditions for the spores to germinate and form a germ tube. The germ tubes then penetrate into the interior of the leaf through openings between the leaf cells called stomata. The disease is not visible to the naked eye. The young plants that are infected look green and healthy. But within the leaf, the metabolism of the developing fungal mycelium begins to target the leaf cells. The cells collapse and the chlorophyll necessary for photosynthesis is destroyed. The leaves become increasingly yellow and brown and within the decomposing leaf tissue, the pycnidia develop, the fruiting bodies of Septoria triticae. In the pycnidia, spores are forming. As they take up water, the spores swell. Then, in drier weather conditions, the surrounding tissue shrinks faster than the developing spores, thus forcing them to be squeezed from pycnidia onto the surface of the decaying leaf. The impact of further rainfall causes the spores to break up, releasing the spores. The spores carried in the rain are then splashed onto other leaves and surrounding crops, while others move freely in the atmosphere and thus the disease cycle begins again.